Okay. Go for it. All right. So this is how the radiant floor heating system works in your house. Um, there's a command from a thermostat in any of the rooms, upstairs, downstairs, anywhere. There's three of them in your house. They come into this box, and whenever there's a command for heat on in any of the rooms, it can be all of them, or it can be one of them, doesn't matter. Any one of them come in here, this box will turn on the system. It'll turn on the heat source, which is your tankless water heater. It'll turn on a circulator pump that moves water through the house. That's basically how it works. Um, if all three thermostats are off, then the system will just shut down and it'll, it'll assume that it's warm enough everywhere. So that everything in between can happen as well. Two can be on, one off, it doesn't matter. And any one of them are on, it starts up. Okay. This heating system, the, the heater itself, generates heat out of this pipe. Water flows out and it's hot. It's controlled at the temperature indicated there. It tries to maintain a constant temperature no matter what happens. So in this case, let's take the case that nothing's happening here. There's no demand, but this is on for some reason. The hot water flows through this pipe, the large diameter pipe. It goes around basically in one giant loop and returns to the same unit. So water can flow through there. It has a pump inside of it that actually moves the water around on its own. And no matter what happens, if I took, take heat away from that water or if I don't, it will always try and maintain the same outside temperature leaving the unit. When there's demand in the house, this will, uh, using this green pump here, pull a small amount of that water, that hot constant temperature water, out of the line. Of course, replacing it with the same amount of cool water, the water from the house that is, is being heated, to replace it. And this is this little mechanism here is cleverly called a heat injector. It basically injects heat uh, into the system from, from this loop. And it has no moving parts. It's simply just two taps like this. So water can come straight through here if this is not on, or it can come and a portion of the water can come in here and split and come back together. Or if this is turning fast enough, all the water will go in here through the house and back, which is elegant, I think. So that's basically how a heat injector works. And the real reason you do it is because you can independently have this loop flowing at a different speed than you have that loop flowing. And so you don't, you're not tied together. If this system were just to pump heat into the house and back, the faster you flowed the water would have uh, an impact on how much heat was going in the house, but it would also affect the uniformity in which it heated the house. Mm -hmm. You can imagine, if you flow it very, very slowly, but at a very high temperature, this area right where the tubes are leaving is going to be super hot. And by the time it gets all the way to the extreme of the house, the extremity of the house is going to be cold. So you have a very large difference in temperatures, and it's uncomfortable. So you want to be able to flow the amount of flow that you want to maintain the proper difference in temperature. And in fact, that's what this pump does. It has a temperature sensor here and one here. It's this one measuring the, the input of the water to the house, and this is measuring the return from all the floors. This pump attempts to keep the difference in temperature fixed at a, at a setting that you can adjust inside the unit. And it goes anywhere from 5 degrees to 25 degrees difference in temperature. The idea behind that is that this will turn at the optimum speed regardless of how much or little demand is required. If just one of the three is on, as, it, as the case is now, this pump is going to turn at one speed, probably a slower speed, to maintain the same temp difference temperature. If all three of them are demanding water, this needs to turn commensurately faster to make sure that the delta T stays proper. And so it's a self-regulating system. The user doesn't care. He'll just turn the thermostat up, and water will instantly come to his room or hallway or wherever. So these are three independent controls. The way you've wired the house or plumbed the house is that you have this uh, this supply of water, which comes into this manifold and then out this pipe, goes off to the hallway and the bulk of the downstairs area. This one controls the single bedroom, which can have an independent control. So if you want it warmer or cooler than the rest. And of course, this is supplying the heat for all of upstairs. And the way you balance different rooms, this might control, for instance, the upstairs. Obviously, there's more than one room upstairs. And the way you make sure that they're uniformly heated is by using these little knobs here. There is an, a manifold like this on the upstairs that this is going to supply all the water to. It goes up to the manifold and splits in many ways. 
probably five or six ways, I would imagine. And by adjusting these relative to each other, you make sure that the, the right proportion of flow goes out to all those rooms. So a small room might get a small a turn down, a big room has a large flow. That's how you uniformly heat those rooms. And should you have more heat required in a room, like a bedroom or lower heat, you turn that knob down or up. So that you do it manually versus this, which is sort of active. And you can actually push a button and get individual areas to adjust. Whereas here, or upstairs rather, you need to go jink around with those until you're happy. Okay. And that's pretty much it. The rest of it is just uh, for you know, code type stuff like backflow pre preventers and regulators and so on that just make the whole thing work. And so what should we pay attention to for the temperature gauges down there? Do you want to record all that part? Or?